Hello everybody and welcome to this Explain 11 video. Today I'm going to check out the Magnite 787. It is currently in version 1.5.0 and we're going to do a full flight from the Philippines, from Manila, to Tokyo Haneda Airport. Uh, ANA flies this uh, route with the 787-9s in real life so it's perfect. And that's what we are going to do today. Meanwhile, Philippines Airlines taking off, is it? Virtuific um, Tree is doing its thing. Yeah, Cebu Pacific Air. So, back to the 787. We are actually using the GENX engines from General Electric, but because of delivery is the Royce Royce logo on it. Yeah, but anyway, and A340 also taxiing to the runway. So yeah, this is uh, Nino Aquino Airport here in uh, the Philippines, Manila. And it is one of the best freeware airport sceneries for x 11. It is quite a big download, but if you enjoy flying around in this corner of the world, it's perfect. And it looks really awesome. Well, let's just take a look at it quickly. Oops. The detail is fantastic. It looks really nice. Maybe next time we need to fly into this airport and check out the approach. And as always, I'm going to include a link in the description. Yeah, it's paver quality. Really nicely done here. Check out here downtown. Looking awesome. So, back to our 787. Well, let's take a look at the exterior modeling. It's looking alright. It has received a, a lot of criticism because of it lo its looks. I would compare this aircraft a little bit to the Kremonos of the A310. It has received a lot of negativity and criticism. Some of it justified, but I really like this. Airplane is slowly getting better and better with updates. Yeah, meanwhile, company aircraft is also pushing back. Exterior model is actually alright. Looking nice enough. We have the GENX engines. Here we have the wings. Uh, this up here is the fuel jettison nozzle. It's uh, looking nice, just like the real 787. There is also here a, I cannot see it, but it's a fueling panel. Can be um, opened and this is where, on the left wing, the fuel um, cables and nozzles are connected. And we have the landing gear, it's also looking nice. I don't know if it's because of delivery. It could use a little bit of detail. It's not the best looking aircraft in x 11, but it's slowly getting better. And also, we can look at some of the characteristic details of the 787. We have the um, compressor air intake right here, and we this is the debris deflector which is uh, extended on the ground and ret uh, retracted in the air so no debris can get into the compressor air intake and we have the uh, I think it is the heat exchanger air intake right here and also on the other side we have the same and here some of the probes right there fuel jets is a nozzle on the right wing. Yeah, all in all, really nicely done. The nose of the airplane is also <laughs> characteristic 787. How it's looking. Yeah, 
and now we can get into the cockpit and prepare to do our pre-flight and get this plane ready for departure. So here we are in the cockpit. It's looking a little bit plain, but uh, I think it's looking alright. Uh, I can see why some people criticize it. Uh, maybe in the future updates um, it will receive a facelift, but in my opinion it's not that bad. And also the interior cabin is modeled. Just take a quick look. And one of the characteristic features of the 787 are these large windows. They are much bigger than, for example, the previous Airbus or Boeing windows. And this is the button for electronically dimming the windows, so no more shutters. Uh, actually, they cannot be dimmed uh, during takeoff. Uh, the reason for that is, in case of an engine fire, the passengers can. Uh, tell the flight attendants who then report it to the pilots when some flames or some engine failure occur occurring during takeoff. So alright, let's not waste any more time. Battery and now we can switch on the electronic flight bag. Now this is the paperless co uh, cockpit concept, so no more uh, manuals and papers, well actually minimize the papers in the cockpit. And uh, this um, EFB is also sending, uh, it's connected with the EFB or the electronic computers of the maintenance and also the airline uh, management or operations it's uh, automatically sending data for the um for for maintenance and also for uh, the dispatch and other operations of the airlines so grant service now we can connect the two external power sources there is one modeled right here and now we can switch on the forward external power there we go and for cabin as well let's put on the irises for alignment And what else? Nav light here quickly. And window heat. Air conditioning. We can um, switch on the equip cooling to auto. Packs not yet. Well, actually, the 787 is a virtually bleedless aircraft uh, so no compressed air is coming from the engines actually a little bit of um, compressed air is used for the empty ice but other than that it's uh, no uh, pneumatic air is used anymore it's all done electronically which contributes to the fuel efficiency yeah, initial designs of the aircraft, the main goal was to improve uh, efficiency by 20% uh, of the 767. It's actually in real life they achieved 21% efficiency, better than the older 767s. Yeah, the airplane was constructed with the use of CFRP. Uh, carbon fiber reinforced plastic or polymer and it contributes heavily to the fuel efficiency 
also the water system and as said before the air conditioning system uses um, another approach or different approach than previous aircraft and uh, the 787 is actually turned out to be a pretty good aircraft it had um, issues early on with the batteries for example but the kinks have been ironed out and uh, airlines really love this plane because of its fuel efficiency Okay, so I'm not doing any everything by the book, but let's just prepare for departure. And let's see. I'm gonna go down here to the EFB. And go to terminal charts. We are going Origin Airport is going to be our PLL. And we're going to our JTT. Tokyo Haneda 4 hour flight. Oops, not, not Y. There we go. Complete. I have to go to the performance calculator and set the weight and balance and check out quickly on the flight plan what values I have to put in So fuel is going to be 25,869 Total, so 25869 There we go Cargo Not going to be that much, just 800 kilos well, let's put it to the aft and put something 842. There we go. And passengers. Well, according to the flight plan, it's 335, but let's just go full. Twenty one here. I'm going to reconfigure the flight plan quickly and sim brief with these values. And let's see what it is going to how it's going to change the fuel consumption. So it's two eighty. So it's going to be 25,193. And landing fuel. Do I need to put something in? That's the maximum. And trip. Fuel is going to be 18,621. Oh well, okay. So, complete. We have these values. And here we have the performance calculator for takeoff. So runway, actually, let's just quickly check out the 80s. Now do we have 80s? 
But let's just stick to the flight plan, which says it's going to be runway 06. And condition is dry, wind. I don't think we have any wind, calm, yep. So just going to put um, 360 at 0, outside at temperature 14 degrees Celsius, and here we have automatically the uh, altimeter setting. Just off one twenty nine ninety two, and thrust rating. Uh, let's do a full takeoff. Flap setting is five, and uh, anti ice is off. ATM. I think it's the trim. So let's just put zero for now. And here we have our data. Flat five and our V speeds. I don't know how, how I should calculate the ATM value officially, but anyway, we're going to use these values for takeoff. And I'm going to start the APU. Okay, APU seems to be starting, and soon we can start these GENX engines <laughs> with these scallops here, which contribute also to uh, noise abatement. Yeah, the plane is um, really quiet, thanks to these engines, as opposed to other <laughs> earlier airplanes. And we don't have any fuel in the center tank, so... The sounds are also okay. I think uh, FTSIM has also a couple of sounds for this airplane, so I'm going to check that out in a later video. Good FMOD sound pack. And before pushing back, we need to do the flight plan quickly. So here we can quickly. I will not in the database. Origin is RPLL and RGTT. There we go. Going to go with U or ANA one five two and departure is going to be runway zero six. And quickly put the flight plan in the box. 
So cab 1a should be somewhere here. Yep. And via going to go or five nine seven. To Vigor. A five hundred and ninety to Bobdo. Yeah, it's going to be a four hour flight. In the meantime, I'm going to let autopilot fly it. Uh, VNAV is um, still not in the features of this airplane, but we can set it manually just to cruise at 390 at Mach. I think we're going to go with 0.85. And next array, Y527. To Billy and Y twenty one to Excel sounds already familiar. In the previous video, I have flown with the seven six seven from Okinawa to Tokyo, and this is going to bring us to our arrival. She is going to be ILS 16 left, and we're going to use the Axel V. Okay. I think first I have to select the star. Alex, one six left and transition. There we go. And execute it. Clear up the disco and nice. Okay. So what else can we do? Cruising altitude is going to be 390. Oh no, 410. 41,000 41, feet. Unable 4000 at Laban. Where is that? And we're going to climb manually, anyways. Also going to manage descent manually. So flight plan is in the box. Thrust limiter. Going to do full. Well, actually, maybe one day is long enough to do this. Um, T01. Going to be limited to 93.5% and 1. And change this quickly. There we go. Alright, APU is up and running. Now we can switch over. And remove those. Ground power units. We are almost here at uh, runway 06, so we don't have to go that far. Let's check out the Wii speeds once again. 
Now it's going to be 155. So let's put 175 here. There we go. Heading is just 060. Take a little while until I scroll. Cannot seem to do quickly. There we go, and put 41,000 feet here. And put the second flight director on as well. And after 10,000 feet, we're going to increase climb speed a little bit to 280, and then after that, going to cruise. We'll just see, we don't have any cost index values. It's going to be 0.85, so. I quickly just put it to plan mode. Nice. Okay, we have the flight plan. Looks all right. Back to map mode. And what else? We can actually go ahead and push back soon. So I don't think we need to shut off the packs for engine start. Not in this airplane. And I don't know why we have the message engine sh uh, shut down. But I'm going to go ahead. Actually, where do I have my squawk code? Yeah, transponder, we can set it to TARA soon. But anyway, let's just go and push back. So this looks much better. Ground to cockpit, plan acknowledged. Call me through the menu when you are ready. And we are ready. Ground to cockpit, tow is driving up. Starting pushback, and you may start engines. And left engine is starting, or engine number one.
And now we can go ahead and start engine number two. I don't think there is a manual for this aircraft, uh, specifically for this aircraft, there is actually a quite a, quite a good book uh, from an airline captain flying the 787, so I'm studying that one as well. Well, and also there is the Quality Wings uh, 787. So in the meantime, we have good engine start. Engine generators. And pressurization auto. Anti ice auto. We have hydraulics. Or do we need these actually? No, I don't think so. Let's just leave them off. Oh well, anyway. APU gen off and APU off. No fuel in the center tank. Oh, there we go. Fourth light extinguished. And we have steering locked out. Operation complete. Go ahead and set the parking brake. Disconnecting tail. Stand by. Ok, we have flaps 5, slats are extended, and is it going to push back into me? Well, seems like they've stopped. Tail is disconnected and bypass pin has been removed. Hand signal on the left. We'll see you next time and have fun up there. All right, hand signal on the left. What else? Like I said, I don't really know how to trim it correctly. Step trim. Oh, well, let's see how it's going to go with the takeoff. All right, there it goes. Let's wait for the hand signal and then we can get out of the way of this aircraft. There we go. Flash him the taxi light. And we can go ahead and taxi. Autopilot disengage, looks similar than the 767. Disengage button. I have to make sure that uh, this switch or this button is in the correct position. 
on the 767, <laughs> some crews managed to... Oh, there it goes. Managed to take off with the autopilot disengaged in the down position. And they did not know why they could not engage the autopilot in the air. And just l roll slowly. 1013, that's correct. And let, you, uh, let this guy depart before us. So the 787 in the late 1990s, Boeing started to uh, think about the new aircraft, which was more efficient than the old 767s. And there were three concepts. One of them was the Sonic Cruiser, which can fly higher and almost at the speed of sound at M.97 or 98. Then there was the blended wing body design, which was basically a giant flying win, uh, wing, but that concept was dropped pretty early on. And then there was the 7E7 project, this aircraft, a uh, conventional airplane, but much more fuel efficient thanks to the extensive use of CFRP. So here we go, taxing slowly to the runway. Let's wait for this guy just to depart. But yeah, early on, uh, the costs of the airplane spiraled out of control really fast. There was also many controversies with the manufacturing. Boeing abandoned the Everett factory, or not abandoned, but uh, shifted production. It's more fun in the Philippines. <laughs> nice. Yeah, this is uh, really resource intensive right now. But it shows 40 FPS. It's a little bit of flickering. Not looking too good, but anyway. Auto brakes to RTO. And what messages do we have? Doors auto. Let's Great. I think it means the doors right here. Let's go to deny. Entry. So we have flaps 5, lights are on. Air conditioning is looking good. This guy is taking off. You can also add a little bit of thrust. So we have TO1. Thrust limited to 93.5% and 1. Don't really need 101% on these engines. And let's line up quickly. I don't think we have anybody incoming. 
actually I should have made sure of that before lining up here. And here we go. Let's make sure everything is set for takeoff. I'm not sure if we need to arm the speed brakes for RTO, but anyway. We have a Toga buttons right here, these two switches. There they are. Everybody pe uh, prepare for takeoff. And everything is looks all right. Everything looks all right to me. So here we go. And Toga. Why it uh, retarded back to 60%, but now we have takeoff thrust. V1, rotate. Rotate. Positive rate. And gear up. Let's follow the flight director actually and need to trim it a little bit upward. One thousand. And now we can go, set autopilot, L nav, and I'm just going to Set auto trust and go to 250. Come on. And slowly retract flaps. Yeah, auto brakes went to the off position automatically. And now we can increase range right here. And autopilot is flying. We are on our way to 410. We are losing speed. Just decrease uh, decrease rate of climb to two thousand feet. And now we are gaining speed.
Right before I forget, get flaps up completely. And this speed bar should disappear soon. Oh yeah, flaps completely up. And we are above 10,000. Actually, just put standard here. And now we can go to 280. Actually, let's check out the flight plan. What's my climb profile? Oh well, we can stick with 280 for now. And then later on at cruising altitude, go to 0.85. And conveniently, I'll just reduce it to 1.6. And get up to our Cruising altitude, cruising altitude of 41,000 feet. Okay, I don't think we need the lights anymore. And we are on our way to Tokyo. Yeah, I'm kind of figuring it out as we go with this plane, but so far so good. And we can enjoy our flight today, 4 hours, to Tokyo. Also going to take a look at the top of descent point, if it's uh, somewhere represented. I don't think so. So I'm going to have to figure it out manually. Actually, do we have weather radar? I don't think so. But soon, turn is coming up. And let's check out on the AVI tab. So we are going to go way up here. Everything is in Japanese, but I think... Tokyo Haneda is somewhere around here. So, four hours more to go, well, maybe uh, we'll be lucky and get favorable winds. Oh yeah, by the way, um, download is big because orthographic scenery is included for the area, but uh, this is where it ends as we leave behind Manila. Alright, we have arrived at 41,000 feet and we are almost at uh, 0.85, so let's just make sure Ooh. to stick around 0.85, not go into overspeed. We have a lot of territory, territory to cover today. Yeah, we can see a couple of waypoints. But let's just stick to... Well, we can go to 160. Yeah, this aircraft can really fly long legs. But I did not really want to do a Los Angeles New Zealand flight. Which would have been, I think, around 17-18 hours. Yeah, this comfortable 4 hours flight. It's actually quite nice. 
So, let's check out the legs. I don't know if we can see the top of the descent point somewhere. No. But it's going to be here before Selno. Actually, between Pombi. Oh no, between Manure and Pombi. And then guide this plane down. Actually, let's check out the approach on the Avi tab. Yeah, we're just leaving the Philippines. There we have it. RGTT. Axel V. Somewhere. There we go. And here we are. Be definitely going to this waypoint darks. I think here it's going to be straight down approach. Seem to remember doing this exact approach a couple of flights ago. It's going to be ILS runway 16. One, sp uh, one six left to be specific. Oh, come on. Yeah, here we have our transition Sandy, and from darks we're going to go to Sandy. We need to stick to 4500 feet at 185 knots maximum. Then we make a turn and follow the eyeless down to 16 left. Maybe we're going to also see some of the Tokyo landmarks. I also have the Mr. X uh, Japan Pro. Just like in the previous video with the 767. But yeah, actually I quite enjoy this 787. Still needs a little bit of fine tuning. But I think the developers are working on it. And hopefully Vulcan or x 11 version 11.50 will be released as a stable release and going to get a little bit of performance boost. But right now I'm getting 56 FPS with my old setup and with these graphical settings. And actually it's quite running nicely. Or running quite nicely. Just got a weather update, looks like. Yeah, there is an option to use the Rolls Royce Trent engines, but I think they are still experimental in this version, so I wanted to stick with the uh, G and X. But they are working fine. Actually, can we go to the progress page? RGTT Distance and ETA Zulu. And you also the top of descent point. So it's good to know. And we are on our way. Not much is going to happen in cruise. It's going to monitor the autopilot. And do various other things, and I'll see you when we are approaching our top of descent point.
Now we have the top of this endpoint coming up soon. I think it's represented by this uh, green circle right here. Uh, we can go down one notch to 80. Elapsed time is 3 hours and 10 minutes, approximately. Top of descent point right here, distance 102 and estimated time of arrival 5.32 Zulu time. But other than that we are looking good, fueling situation looks nice. And now we can set up for landing soon, so it's going to be ILS runway 16 left in Haneda. So, every tab right here 16 left. Let's tune the nav radios to 111.95. One 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 point ninety five nav one, and let's put in nav two as well. Final approach course is one five seven. Oops. Oh yeah. There we go. And now that's taken care of, let's go back to the progress page. And we are going to go down to 14,000 feet, local transition altitude. After that, we have one restriction, 6,000 feet. And then we're going to stay at 4,500. According to the approach right here, and then ILS. One six left. Yep. Yeah at Sandy 4500 and then go down to 4000. Make a turn and then intercept ILS and localizer and the glide slope. And that's it. So it's still a little bit of time left. I think around... What's that? ETA to RGTT? Yeah. 5.56, around 6 o'clock Zulu time, we're going to be landing if all goes well. I don't think there is a landing performance calculator or something similar. Yeah, but anyway, don't think we can also get the, uh, the landing speeds, VREF and similar. Uh, but I think it's going to be around 140. Just uh, guessing, but uh, I think 140 is going to work. We're going to land it by feel of the aircraft, so. Soon the top of descent is coming up. Let's go to 157. There we go. And making our turn, there's the top descent point. I'm just going to put uh, 14,000 feet here. Alright, I'm just going to put then a decent rate of minus 2000 feet per minute and then manage the airplane to the assigned altitudes. Like I said, 
first 14,000, then 6,000, after that 4,500, and 4,000, and from there we are going to go down to, or into sub D, glide slope and localizer. So nav radios are set, and then I'll see you when we are preparing for landing. Alright, speed brakes can come back up now. And we have left 10,000 feet a long time ago. And we are going down to. Whoa! Going down to 4,500. Let's decrease the rate of descent a little bit. 1,000 feet to go. Here is Sandy. Here we have to be at 4,500. And after that, we are going down to 4,000. Make a turn and land at our runway here, one six left. And at 10,000 feet, or 14,000, I switched to the local barometric pressure setting, 2979. Lights are on and we are doing actually quite nicely. We're at 2.30, oh, we are sticking with 2.30 for now, after that here we are slowing down to uh, around 190, 180 and then extend landing gear once we are established. It's a little bit rainy outside. And we are making our final turn. Here at Sandy, and now I can do 4000 feet. Slowly. There we go. And we can go down to 190. After that, we can extend flaps gradually, landing gear. Let's see if we can see the localizer when we make our final turn. Oh, this weather doesn't do good for my FPS. And it's also this area is quite uh, resource intensive. And it looks like localizer. I can already see it. And we are moving. A little bit of wind from the right.
can't see much from the landmarks <laughs> right now. Okay, let's uh, push the approach button. And localizer is alive. Glide slope is armed, and here we have the glide slope indicator. And we are down to 190. And then we can do actually flaps. Let's go flaps 18 right now. Wow, clouds everywhere. And soon we are on the glide slope. Let's go ahead and arm the speed brakes. And we can go down to 170. And then extend landing gear. Full flaps. Auto brakes to two. Kind of tempted to clear the weather up, but uh, eh, maybe we are leaving behind that cloud layer. And Tokyo downtown is right here. Now we can see this landmark already. I've left the other one. The runway is still not inside, 2500, okay. And then, I don't think these buttons work here to disconnect the auto trust. So it's going to take over. And, seems like I can see the runway up ahead. Yep, there we go, 1-6 left. Mm, here's the harbor. And we are speeding up a little bit. Trying to keep it in this range. Yeah, I think 145, 150 knots for V ref is going to be alright. And then disengage the autopilot and then follow those flight directors. It's a little bit of crosswind. So I'm going to have to stay crabbed. Apply a little bit of trim. I don't know what the uh, should have said the missed approach altitude, but anyway. Yeah, we see the runway actually, nice, uh, maybe next time if I fly into Tokyo it's going to be a 
nice sunny approach where you can see all the beautiful work Mr. X has done here in the Japan Pro. And the really wing with speed, it looks alright. Runway is clear, no aircraft. Decrease speed, uh, we are a little bit fast though. And we are a little bit low, so... Yeah, we can continue. And land. And try to keep it in the touchdown zone. Nice and easy. Hard landing, <laughs> what the hell. And reversers. Actually looked all right for there, for a minute, but anyway. 80 knots. Slow it down. And then we can exit here. Flaps are up. Here we are in Tokyo, slowly taxi. And we have arrived with the 787. Actually, it was alright. <laughs> Hard landing, anyway. It wasn't that bad. Ended up being a little bit too fast and too high up there. At least it was not wasted. But yeah, didn't have a V ref speed, but anyway, I'll take it. Alright, let's park here quickly. I think APU is already up and running. APU running, yes. Oh, nice 789, that's great. So let's see where do we need to stop exactly. Eight, seven, six. Three, two, one, and stop. All right, parking brake, and we have arrived. Switch over to APU Gen, and we can shut the engines down. Actually, I should have turned all these lights off before parking. But anyway. There are buildings everywhere. And here we have Haneda Airport. Tokyo in the background. And those beautiful engines are shutting down. So yeah, it was a nice flight. Enjoyed it a lot, although it took a lot of time to get here. 
And that landing, well, didn't have a V ref speed, but anyway, I take it hard landing. Try to keep it in the touchdown zone. Alright, now let's take a look at the replay. In the meantime, take care. Thanks for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one.